I'm going to make a pitch here for somebody else and you're going to go against me. But I think for just my understanding of the Falcons offense, this player would be a better fit. Um, and that is Matthew Bergeron. I think Matthew Bergeron is a better fit for the mobility that is demanded of the, the blockers on this Falcons team. They like to get those guys in space. They like the movement skills. And I think Bergeron is a exceptionally more fluid athlete than Steve Avila. And I love Steve Avila for the more compact aspect of the game, much more of a power scheme, but he doesn't climb as well. He's not as good in space as Matthew Bergeron. I think Bergeron is honestly, he's also got more tackle upside guard tackle versus guard center of uh, Steve Avila. I think Bergeron is an exceptional. Uh, All right. We're in the war room. Fit. We are in the war room with y'all right now. This is Matthew Bergeron from the senior bowl. Uh, he, he played a lot of tackle, but he's got the movement he can play across the board. Um, you can see him real light on his feet. And as what Nick is saying, this is against Byron Young. If you watch the Falcons and how they run screen plays and get out wide, when they've got McGarry and Lindstrom on the right side, swinging out wide and Dahlman then sprinting out to the second level, when they're going to the right side, it's it's pretty. It's it's fun to watch. Can you do that on the left side as much with where they had last year with Eli Wilkinson? Probably not. Uh, with Jake Matthews, probably not. Um, with Steve Avila, probably not. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. You've got tackle athleticism here. And again, you see how flexibility the flexibility he has, how light on the feet he is, that he has the ability to get out to the second level and run those dynamic screen plays, wide running plays that Nick is talking about that the Falcons do. And, and, and again, if your scheme dependent, I don't want you. I don't think he is. And that's kind of no. the point here. He is at guard. So can he play guard here? He is at left guard. Uh, and he got a good punch and opened that up for Kenny McIntosh. Now let's take a look at the body type and the size. Whoops. I didn't mean to hear stop screen. I meant to hit uh share a video file of Steve Avila. Um, I, I kind of like mashers. I I'll tell yeah. you, and, and I think he's mobile enough. He's a wide load and he's so strong. He just mauls people. Um, he can handle anybody you put in front of him inside. I think he, he, he could be an old school tackle. He probably played some tackle at TCU because right he, you know, he's, bit. he's, he doesn't have the length, but he's got the, the, the quickness and the agility out there. Oh man. Um, Again, we've said good options. You're going to have good options at 44. If I'm taking Bergeron or Avila, I'm pretty happy out there. Now, let me look between the two of them at tackle. Syracuse, uh, Bergeron was 6'5", 320, 30 yard vertical leap. Um, Avila at TCU, 6'4", 330, 5'2", 474 shuttle with a 7'85 L cone. So good, not great. Avila is not an incredible athlete. He's massive. He's strong. He's technically sound. His, his athleticism and his strength and balance. That's yeah. what makes him an incredible athlete. He doesn't have the quickness. No, you know, he's a it's, phone booth it's, like, it's like saying a marathon runner is not a great, an incredible athlete. Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah. It's just, it's just different. This is, yeah. he is a different version of an incredible athlete because his traits are strength and balance as yeah. opposed to uh, quickness side to side. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I could be, I could be talked into Matthew Bergeron and frankly, Matthew Bergeron, despite the, where he is on this board, I was talk about getting some, getting some time sneaking in possibly to sneaking into the first round. So again, if I wanted to come off this a little bit, I could also be pretty darn happy with BJ Ojolari at edge. Is he too similar? I think you're looking for more like massive, you know, if the Ade Ade or Keon White were there, I think you're looking for some hulks out yeah. there with that scheme. Like Zach Harrison. Like Yaya Diaby in the fourth? Yes. In or the Yaya Diaby in the there, third. But Keanu Benton on the yeah. inside, I could be happy with that pick. I could be happy at wide receiver. The Falcons need a number two wide receiver with Cedric Tillman. And I mentioned Jonathan Mingo. Jonathan Mingo is still there. Also, I think um, we got to talk a little bit of cornerback as well. Um, you had Julius Brent still available. You got uh, Darius Rush available. Oh, and Julius I saw Brent would be a great pick. See, this is what I'm saying, y'all. Yeah. Day two is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't trade up, there's, and this is one of the reasons why I said I'd love to trade down and picked up another number two. There's 10 players still right here that I mm -hmm. would be 
really, really thrilled to have uh, and, and plug in. As far as who can help me the most right now, I want be- a left guard. Yeah, you can go with Avila again. I just was thinking about it more and more. Matthew Bergeron, I think, is the discount version on um, Peter Skronsky, where we had the discussion about, I think he can be an elite guard, but he also could play tackle if you want, gives you more long-term flexibility at a position of value. And I just think with the angles and the movement and the second level targeting that you see in Arthur Smith's scheme, that Matthew Bergeron's game translates to what they look for a little bit more, but you're not giving up the size and power at the 320. He's not as much of a phone booth mauler as Steve Avila. If you want that at left guard, I totally get it. Uh, yep. But um, I think and, in the scheme. And Ryan Adonis says, I think Fontenot and Smith like their left guards to be to be on the bigger side. I'm going to talk myself out of this, uh, Ryan, because the guy who comps on the Falcons to Steve Avila as far as, oh, he's a mauler and he played right tackle and he got moved to guard was, was Jalen Mayfield. Uh, now, Steven, very similar body types, wide load. They're... Forte was supposed to be the running game. Jalen Mayfield got thrown to the wolves too early. I'll, I'll keep making excuses for him. Uh, he wasn't ready to play. It wasn't his fault that he was thrown out there prematurely. That was the state of the Falcons roster, but yep. he wasn't good enough. Uh, but again, the whole point of this exercise today, all is to show you some of the options that are going to be available day two. Mm-hmm. These are several options to take. I'd be pretty happy. I'm not trying to guess who the Falcons are going to take. I'm just saying, uh, and, and AQ Dragons then is that Pickens in a few clips. Yes, it was uh, South Carolina defensive lineman. Um, I like Pickens. A but lot. I'd be pretty happy with, with a lot of these guys, including, well, Julius Brents, Joe Tipman, <laughs> uh, and Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse. So I can live with that. 